All right, welcome everyone. And this video, just gonna run through quickly how to get Suricata installed and running in Remnix. Uh, it does not come, at least at the time of this recording with Remnix. And while if you're familiar with Suricata, this, this video really isn't uh, about getting you a full introduction to Suricata. There's a lot of great videos out there. Um, Suricata is typically seen as a, as a network security monitoring tool. It monitors network traffic and it can generate IDS alerts. Um, however, in the context of malware analysis, um, we can also use it to, to run in what's called offline mode, and that offline mode that can process PCAPs and generate those same alerts. And that's the context that I typically use Suricata when I'm doing malware analysis, doing some investigations, um, sort of in this, this offline mode. So we'll just jump right into it, uh, get the installation going. Um, the best resource here is for, for Suricata is to go to read the docs, so suricata.readthedocs.io. There are a number of different installation options. Um, since we are on Remnix, we're gonna go ahead and just use the binary packages for Ubuntu, um, which you can see here, there's just really three simple things. Uh, Suricata, the OISF, which is the, the foundation that supports Suricata, maintains a PPA, so we'll add that to the system. We'll then update and go ahead and install. So it's relatively straightforward. Moving over to a terminal, then we'll go ahead and we'll add that PPA pretty much just accept the defaults here in order to get that added. And then once that's been added, we can do an apt update and an apt install Suricata, and that should grab the package for us. Okay, once the installation is complete, the easiest way to verify is to run Suricata with a dash capital V, and that'll give us Suricata's release information or the version information of what we just installed. So again, um, at the time of this recording, Suricata is on version 6.0.4, with uh, 6. Dot being the major release, and, and I believe 7.0 is just around the corner. So now that we have Suricata installed, while again, if we were to, to put this into a, a mode where we wanted to monitor network traffic, we would look at running Suricata as a service. But in this case, we don't wanna do that. We just wanna use Suricata for that offline capability to, to process PCAPs. Now, where you get your PCAPs is really up to you. Um, I maintain a repository on GitHub with uh, several artifacts. Uh, in a way, it's, it's very similar to malware traffic analysis, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. If you're not, please do take some time and do a search for malware traffic analysis. You'll find tons of great resources there that are posted by um, Brad Duncan. Before we get too much further, it's worth pointing out that uh, the directory structure that Suricata will install to, so we do have under Etsy Suricata, we have uh, all the primary configuration files as well as the rules file. Um, the primary configuration is uh, suricata.yaml. So we can take a look at that. Um, there isn't much that we need to change, at least not for this demonstration. The very beginning of the configuration file has things like home net and external net. And that's really probably the most important thing just to make sure that those, um, that those variables, those are actually variables that'll be used by the engine, that those are set up correctly. The home net is just typically your, your RFC 1918 internal IP space. So the 192.168.10.0.172.16. Um, and your external net is anything that is not your home net. So most of the traffic as, you know, as defenders, we're gonna be looking at defending our internal space. And so these are typically right. But again, if you've got a PCAP or something that's going to deviate from this, then you do need to make some modifications here. The biggest impact this will have is on the actual rules. So if you look at any of the rules, um, which we're not gonna look at rules in this video, we'll save that for another one. If we look at the format of, the, of a rule, and, and a rule is what defines an alert, an alert is what would show up and we would, we would you know, investigate or triage, um, the home net and external net are gonna be used fairly extensively throughout those in order to, to inform Suricata how to inspect the traffic, when to look at connections that are going out of our network and when we're looking at connections that are coming back into our network. So that's probably the biggest things. Uh, again, lots of stuff that you can look at inside of this configuration file, but that's really beyond the scope of what we wanna, what I wanna cover today. Okay, um, very similarly, Suricata without rules, it still generates a ton of data. But if we are investigating a PCAP, we're, we're trying to generate those IDS alerts because that can help draw our attention to a specific piece of traffic, then we need rules to begin with. The easiest way to do that is to use the Suricata update utility that comes with Suricata. And if you run that, you'll see that it's going to go ahead and uh, really, it's gonna download by default the Emerging Threats open rule set. It's a very large rule set, uh, you know, 20 some thousand, 30 some thousand rules that will then be available to, you know, to be loaded into Suricata when it runs and, and matched against your traffic. 
Um, again, rules and rule sources and rule management really is its own topic. Uh, but for the purposes here of just getting started, getting Suricata up and running in, in Remnix, this is really all we need. Um, what Suricata Update will do is that if we don't have any sources configured, a source being a place that we can get rules from, it'll default to um, loading or, or grabbing the Emerging Threats rule set uh, that is hosted for, on Emerging Threats. So our, our system has to have a route out to the internet in order to download that. Um, you don't have to, you know, if, you, if you're running a sensor or, or running a Suricata instance, and you were completely isolated, had no internet, you know, you just have to find a way to copy those rules in. And then you could, you could tell your rule manager to be looking at a local, the local file system for that. You know, for this video, assuming that you have a connection to the internet in order to grab those rules. Um, once those rules are done, you'll see some information here about just how many rules were there, which ones were disabled, and if any of them were modified. Uh, there's just statistics. It's just telling you about the rules. And again, if you don't know much about them, you don't need to worry about that too much right now. Um, that's something that certainly if you get, you know, deeper into running an intrusion detection system or network security monitoring, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll tackle those issues when they come. Finally, you'll notice that there is um, location where the rules are going to be written to, varlib suricata rules, and it's going to be in one file, suricata.rules. As well as then there is a test. It just makes sure that the rules that were downloaded and the configuration that suricata has, that everything's working together, everything's playing nicely. Uh, if you wanted to investigate those rules, again, there are varlib suricata rules, uh, suricata.rules. You can see there's our file. Uh, we can cap that, but you're just going to get a, a lot of just content. And, and again, here's where all the rules are. Each rule is going to have its own unique ID. It's called a SID, signature ID. So you could, you know, you could investigate each one of those individually if needed. Well, what about processing that PCAP file? Um, you can certainly take a look at the documentation, read the docs, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. But again, to try to kind of kickstart that process, make it a little bit easier, um, there is a script that I have created that's available on GitHub. And the gist of this script is that it's looking for a single file as input. It doesn't, doesn't validate that it's actually a PCAP file. So if you provide it with something that isn't a PCAP file, you'll, you'll likely see the engine error out. Um, so looking for a single file as an argument, it's going to clear out the eve.json file. So that is the default output file located at varlog suricata um, eve.json. That's the default output file for suricata. All of the event data, the protocol data, uh, statistics, um, alerts, everything is going to be by default going to be placed into that file. So every time this script runs, it's going to clear that file. And because we're not running Suricata in service mode, it's not listening into your, your network interface, it's not generating data on, you know, as it's, it's constantly running, um, this will make sure that every time we run the script, we're just looking at data that then is from that one PCAP file. Uh, the next inst you know, command is gonna to be to run Suricata. Um, really the only thing you have to focus on there is the dash r that is the that indicates the suricata that it's to run in offline mode so there we're going to tie the input file that pcap with that dash r argument and now by default suricata is going to again create that data in the eve.json file after processing the pcap the last little bit is to print out the alerts so instead of having to go through and manually investigate eve.json even with small pcap there's going to be a lot of data there so that last bit's going to use JQ, which if you're not familiar with JQ, it's a command line utility that you can use uh, to, to really to search through, to filter, to, uh, to query uh, JSON data. And so uh, this eve.json file. So we're going to use that in order to just grab any alerts that were generated. So it's possible if your PCAP didn't generate any alerts that at the end, when the script is finished, you're not going to have any alert you know, alerts to investigate. That's not, that doesn't mean that there was a problem. It just means simply that there were no alerts. Um, of course, I grabbed a PCAP that ensures that there are alerts that are generated. And if you look at where you're getting your, your, your sample PCAPs from, especially if this is the first time you're running with it, you know, you typically want to see those alerts generated. So you know that everything's set up correctly. Um, if you go back to uh, sites like what, like what I do, um, whoops, here we go. Here's just another example. Um, I typically provide the alert results. So you'll know that by looking at the section here on this particular event that I posted, um, there are Suricata alerts. So the PCAP that, that you download will generate these same alerts. So that's what I went ahead and did for this demonstration. Okay, so uh, you can download that. Um, and I've already got it downloaded. You, you likely have to add 
the execute permissions to it. You can do that with chmod plus x and then the script. And then from there, we just need to invoke dot forward slash to invoke and tell the environment to look in this current directory uh, and then the name of our pcap file. So now you'll see uh, Suricata has started. Um, Suricata version information is, is emitted. And the time that, that is taking right now is just simply the time for the engine to load, to initialize, to look for any rules that you have configured it to use, um, and to load those up into the engine. And this happens every time we run it. So there are actually different modes that Suricata can run in. Of course, when it's just running in service mode, it's just constantly listening. So you only have this, this initialization, you know, sort of performance hit every time you run it. Um, but with PCAP in offline mode, you can also run Suricata in, in a Unix socket mode, in which case it's always listening for you to feed PCAPs into it. And then again, we can kind of avoid this, this process of loading. So here you can see um, we do have kind of to go back just a little bit of, of output. Again, this is always just good to look at because it, it's confirmation that we were that the engine was able to process the PCAPs. So you'll see that um, you know the kind of the last little bit of, of logging that the PCAP file read one, the, the PCAP file module read one file, processed 646 packets and 380,000 bytes. So we know that the PCAP was processed whether or not alerts were generated. And then below, again, this PCAP I ensured had some alerts that would generate based off of the Emerging Threat Opens rule set. You can see that it's a little crowded here just because I have the font size up, but um, essentially each one of these is an alert that was generated. And you'll have basic information about that alert, such as the time date stamp. Now we process the PCAP, so the time date stamp will come from the PCAP, not from the current date and time. We have the signature ID, uh, we have the message of the signature of the rule. So this is a, a JA3 hash. Um, we then have uh, the source and the destination. So we can see where, what was the direction of this traffic. In this case, it looks like we have an internal host communicating to an external host. And with that, um, on a non-standard port as well. So the there's lots of great information here, but that's not everything. If we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into this, we could get into that eve.json file and pull out all of the data uh, that Suricata parsed and generated for us. So a lot of it, again, the engine is just parsing the PCAP and reproducing that. You could look at that same information using something like Wireshark. Some of it's generated, JA3 hashes, for example. That's information that is generated based off of a TLS session, a secure session. And so Suricata generates that data that allows us to see that information, to pivot off of it, to you know, apply a rule set to it as well. Okay, well, we could spend uh, a, a quite a bit of time here going through each one of these alerts, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video here. What I really just wanted to cover was how to get Suricata installed on Remnix, how to then run Suricata update to at least get uh, a free and open source rule set, Emerging Threat Open, and then how you can start processing PCAPs. Because with this capability now, you can take any PCAP and... and so in your, your malware analysis workflow, now we can begin to generate those IDS alerts, which can you know, oftentimes help to understand and sort of process that, that network traffic just a little bit quicker. Lots more that Suricata can do, so please stay tuned for future videos, as well as to check out the OISF, that's the Open Information Security Foundation, their channel on YouTube. A lot of great content there to help also in understanding and, and learning all of the things that Suricata can do for you. So um, until then, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you all shortly.